All right. Um, our next speakers are Honge and uh, Kai Zhu, and they're going to talk to us about their work on the Turing probabilistic programming language. Okay, thanks for the introduction. So today, Hong and I are going to represent in the Turing team to give you an introduction on the Turing probabilistic programming language. So I will start with a very short recap or introduction to probabilistic programming and uh, where Turing lives in a big picture. So in probabilistic programming, we basically write probabilistic programs, which are just computer programs which represent some probabilistic models using some probabilistic statements. We, using these probabilistic statements, we either declare random variables we, or we say that we condition it on some observed data. So there are certain probabilistic programming languages which restrict their models to a certain range. But for Turing, we are more interested in the universal probabilistic programming seeing that we can support any uh, stochastic control flows so that we allow users to represent arbitrary probabilistic models. Given that we allow users to represent arbitrary probabilistic models, uh, we also want users to do inference easily. So we want some generic inference algorithms such as HMC, SMC, particle Gibbs, or EP. And there are another uh, divergence or two main approach to implement a probabilistic programming language we call the first class as standalone uh, probabilistic programming languages. They have their own compiler, and they didn't uh, like live in another master language. And another type, uh, and another category are embedded in probabilistic programming languages. Basically, they have a master programming language they live in, and they support some statement to to support those kind of probabilistic uh, statement we want. And this is the approach our Turing takes. So this is a workflow of who, who can use, uh, use Turing to do. Basically, you can, you can define some models and send to the co Turing's compiler, which is a runtime compiler, which will compile your model. And uh, after that, you can send some data and that compiled model into the inference engine of Turing. Then you, when you have your learned model, and then you can send some data to make predictions or other analysis you want. And as you can see in this workflow, there are mainly three uh, major components in Turing, which is the uh, compiler, uh, inference engines, and uh, how do we handle the inference result. And I'm going to start with the uh, compiler. So this is a piece of a code in Turing, which, uh, which is simply a Gaussian model with unknown mean and uh, variance. Basically, you say you define model, and uh, you put some prior on the mean and uh, variance of your uh, Gaussian distribution and you observe some data follow the Gaussian distribution. And let's look into this piece of code um, more detailly. So, so in the very beginning of the code, we have this at model, which is a uh, Michael in Julia. This, what this Michael or at model did is it will translate the rest piece of the uh, rest of the code into another Julia program. And uh, what we do in that transformation is basically we replace those tail notation, which is a statistical notation, but we either perform, a, define a new random variable or perform conditioning on data. How we handle, and so the rest of piece of code is a simple like function definition in Julia. We define a function called gdemo, which takes argument x. So the way we distinguish data from random variable is that whatever user passed in this function are data, and the other thing are random variable. So when we have those uh, uh, tail notation, uh, when the left-hand side is something we are not declared as data, we are saying this random variable is, uh, is distributed follow that uh, distribution, and this is the same. And when the left-hand side is uh, something we declared as data, we are saying uh, we observe such data following a certain distribution. And except from this tail notation, everything else of this piece of code is just Julia code. You can plug, for example, a for loop here, or you can plug another function you define outside, or even you can plug a third party library inside the Turing model. And we have example of this in the end. So this is the compiler of Turing. And I will hand it to Hong to talk about the rest two components of Turing. Right, uh, I'll be showing a little bit uh, how we can do inference uh, in Turing. Uh, before I show how we do inference in Turing, let's first uh, briefly recap uh, the two popular 
inference frameworks are available for purpose programming languages. The first framework is based on forward simulation. So this is a model that Zubin has showed this morning, which is a basic uh, hit marker model with uh, some priors on the transition matrix and emission parameters. The inference target uh, is to learn uh, these uh, uh, green variables, which include the latent states uh, and the model parameters. The core idea of uh, for simulation based inference is to treat the model or uh, to treat the progress program as a data simulator. And when the execution of the progress program is complete, then we reweight each execution trace with its likelihood. So uh, there are many Monte Carlo methods could be categorized uh, under this group. Uh, here are some examples uh, sequential Monte Carlo, particle MCMC methods single side metropolis hosting, uh, also rejection sampling, ABC. A lot of examples could be put on this slide. The main advantage of forward simulation-based inference is its generality. It could be applicable to models with uh, arbitrary stochastic control flows, with discrete variables, uh, with non-differentiable variables. And here are some example languages that support this uh, framework of inference. The second popular inference framework uh, for purpose programming is based on AutoDiff. The philosophy of this framework of inference is to constrain the set of models that we support in a purpose programming system to improve inference efficiency. So basically, this set of uh, inference algorithms only support uh, models with, without stochastic control flows, without discrete variables, because we need to get uh, gradient information. There are many algorithms that could be uh, categorized under this framework. Uh, here are two popular ones, uh, which are covered by early talks today. Uh, uh, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo sampler, which is uh, the default sampler from the Stein language. Also, black box version inference, which is uh, revealed by uh, Professor David Bly earlier t this afternoon. So the third framework uh, of performing inference is uh, about uh, how we can combine the simulation-based uh, inference framework and gradient-based inference framework together so that we can, uh, an optimal, well, we can optimize the inference efficiency to the maximal extent. So whenever we can apply a gradient-based inference method, we should do that. Only for variables that we can't do gradient-based inference we can apply a more general inference method based on forward simulation. So for this hit mark model, here is an example inference framework we can use. It is a very simple Gibbs sampler which consists of two steps. So the first step will sample discrete variables, the latent states using a particle Gibbs sampler. Then the second step will sample these uh, uh, transitioning parameters and the emission parameters using a gradient-based uh, sampler. Here we are using Hamiltonian Monte Carlo sampler. Now we've uh, uh, reviewed uh, these popular inference frameworks available in probably programming systems. Let's see how we can do it uh, in Turing. So this is the example that Kai has introduced, which is a very simple hello world example in probably programming systems. Uh, it is a simple Gaussian model with unknown mean and variance. The inference target is to learn these unknown mean and uh, variance parameters. So the diagram here shows how we do inference in Turing. Basically, the first line condition, on, condition the model on two observations. So these uh, data will pass in this loop here. And the inference goal is to sample S and M from the conditioning distribution. The second line here constructs a Hamiltonian Monte Carlo sample with certain parameters. Uh, I'm, not going in, I'm not going to go into details about the, the meaning of these parameters, but the first one is very simple. It's the total number of, iter total number of iterations we are going to run HMC for. Then the final line apply this constructed sampler to the conditioning distribution defined here. The obtained samples will be returned uh, in this variable chain. It is uh, basically a Markov chain 
uh, MCMC chain structure that stores the MCMC samples, which can be used for later inspections. So now we, we have seen the basic inference uh, syntax in Turing. Here is uh, how we can apply a compositional inference algorithm in Turing. So basically, we are creating a Gibbs sample that has two steps. The first step is a Hamiltonian Monte Carlo step. We have an additional argument here, which is uh, column M. This is used to specify the subset of model parameters Hamiltonian Monte Carlo will sample from the targeted distribution. Similarly, for the Paleo Gibbs sampler, here, uh, this column S indicates Paleo Gibbs will be responsible to sample variable S from the GDEMO model. So we can see S and M defined in this GDEMO example. Then uh, the Gibbs wrapper will basically iterate between these two component samplers for 500 iterations. Uh, we'll return 500 MCMC samples as the result. Now let's see how this works. Before uh, showing the result, this is a table of uh, currently supported inference algorithms in Turing. We have five columns in the table, which indicate uh, whether a sampler supports discrete variables, whether it can make use of gradients in the sampling process, whether it requires adaptation. Uh, this is only necessary for Hamiltonian, uh, col uh, Hamiltonian family of samplers at the moment, whether the sampler support universal probabilist programs, and whether it can be used as a basic component for compositional inference. Now let's see how we can perform prediction after we collect uh, the samples from the targeted distribution. So this slide shows in action how we can sample from the targeted dis distribution given a conditional distribution and a constructed sampler. Basically, we call the sample function with this conditional distribution as the first argument, and then the constructed sampling algorithm as the second argument. Then this is the output of running that sample function. Basically, it first uh, uh, output some information suggesting that S and M are model parameters, uh, X and Y are data we are going to condition on. It takes four seconds to collect uh, 500 samples using the Gibbs sampler. Uh, it returns all the samples in this data structure, which is implemented by a sub-module of Turing. Now, if we call a, the plot function, which is a utility function implemented by the MCMC chain sub-module of Turing, then we get uh, a wide range of uh, useful plots for MCMC algorithms. Here I'm just showing the trace plot and the KD estimate of the, of the parameter. Another useful function is uh, called describe. If we call describe on a MCMC chain data structure returned by the sample function, we get uh, uh, a long list of useful summary statistics for, for the MCMC chain. So here are the columns for, for the uh, expectation of the parameter, the standard deviation, the Monte Carlo standard error, effective sample size, and extra. Right, next I will hand it back to Kai, who will talk about uh, a probabilist programming ecosystem in Julia. Okay, so we know the workflow and the components of Turing. I will talk, uh, briefly talk about how we actually implement Turing. So the key message here is that Turing, the code base of Turing is very light because we use a lot of use of features from Julia and a lot of useful numerical libraries in Julia. So basically, Julia have its own very clean syntax and it's very powerful meta programming. So we, that allows, uh, we have that at model Michael we've seen before, which gives, at, as a, at, gives us a runtime compiler and very intuitive modeling syntax. And also, Julia has a very good native support of distributed computing, and we use it to implement some parallel inference algorithms. And uh, our SMC sampler is based on the core routine or the cooperative multitasking in Julia. 
And this is what we use to implement our SMC sampler and Paco Gibbs. And we also contribute a library called LibTask uh, in Julia to make this more, even more easier. And there are other excellent third-party numerical libraries in Julia. So for example, distributions JR has a very comprehensive support of distributions. So in the previous program we've seen uh, before, either, neither of those distributions are implemented in Torin, but it's just a distribution in this package. You can plug any distribution in this package into a Torin program, or you can customize your own distributions and easily plug in that program. And at home, in truth, we have contributed this MCMT chain package, which is, serves as a unified interface to uh, deal with uh, MCMC inference result. Uh, you can do prediction or do diagnose using it. Also, as HMC need gradient, we actually didn't implement our own AD. Instead, we used some AD package in Julia, and this AD package works in a generic way allow us to differentiate our, pro our own program or even a third party library. And we also contribute a library called Bijectory, which uh, uh, implements some useful uh, common transformations to transform some constraint variable into uh, uh, the real space. So be as, we, as I said, uh, Turing is purely uh, implement Julia. So another interesting thing is that it interacts with other libraries in Julia very nicely. So uh, in brief, if you want to perform Bayesian inference in your library, you can easily plug your library inside a, a Turing program. And for example, there are people, uh, researchers doing uh, uh, differential equations. They have some differential equations with some unknown parameters. They want to perform Bayesian inference on it. They can simply plug their library, their differential equations solver, implemented by them into a Turing policy program. Another uh, example I'm going to show the next slide is how, how we actually combine Turing with a deep learning library called Flex. So uh, what we are going to do is uh, implement a Bayesian neural network, which is neural, uh, with this uh, architecture with using Flex and Turing. So basically, this piece of code defines a forward path of this neural network. As you can see, there are some utility function like chain, dense layer. Those functions are implemented by Flex and which is totally Turing, Turing independent. This defines the forward path of uh, uh, this new network, uh, feed some data and uh, uh, model parameters. So in order, once we have this function and we want to implement a Bayesian new network, the only thing we need to do is actually say, have a Turing uh, public program saying that the weights of this uh, neural network is distributed on a uh, multivariate normal, and we uh, ha use this function to do a forward pass, and we observe some observations. Then this piece of code already defines a Bayesian neural network, and we can do inference as usual, as, uh, like the simple Gaussian demo case. Basically, we can call a sample on the model feed some data and the uh, HMC sampler, and uh, it works as usual. And this diagram is an illustration of how the predictive distribution we uh, get from the inference result. <coughs> uh, so to sum up, uh, we've introduced Turing, which is a powerful for purpose programming language. It has very intuitive modeling syntax, it, and it supports both black box and uh, compositional inference. It, because the code is pure Julia, it's very hackable, and, uh, works very smoothly with other uh, libraries in Julia. And uh, our current focus is on uh, to do compositional modeling in Turing, and we also want Turing uh, integrated with deep learning libraries uh, more tightly, and also we are looking into how, make Turing, uh, how to make Turing scale to big problems easily. These are related works, and these are a subset of our contributors, and we thank everyone who have contributed to Turing, and uh, Turing is open source, and we welcome people to contribute to Turing. Thanks. So maybe our next speaker can come forward, and uh, while our next speaker does that, maybe we can take a question. Yes, Alexi. Question. 
Sorry, could you repeat the do question? Do you have parameter do you have parameter adaptation in your HMC and not implementations? Uh, the question is, do we have uh, parameter adaptation in our HMC? So we do have uh, NAS uh, implementation. So we have. So the real question is, uh, if you nest the parameter adapting nuts inside a Gibbs that's also manipulating some discrete variables, the yeah. will lose us up the geometry. Does the adaptation still work? So, yeah. This is an open research question. We are looking into that. <laughs> 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 All right, let's thank the speakers again and we'll take it up.